This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 618 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by Eco Gold, saddle pads and protective boots for your equine athlete. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is about splint bone injuries. It is an excerpt from the Horse.com's weekly horse health report on the Horses in the Morning Show, episode 363. All in one neat package, the who, what, where, why, and when of this problematic vestige of the equid toe. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Eco Gold. Eco Gold uses the latest developments in textile engineering plus smart design to make the most advanced saddle pads and protective boots available. Here's what two-time Canadian Olympic three-day coach, international competitor, and author Jane Savoy has to say about Eco Gold pads. I love the Eco Gold dressage pad. I love the way it looks and how it stays perfectly in place. But most importantly, I love the frictionless feature that ensures that my horses are happy. If you care about your horse's comfort, you'll love this pad too. Ask for Eco Gold frictionless saddle pads at your local tax supplier store or visit them online at ecogold.ca. Now, enjoy today's tip. And as usual, we would like to welcome Michelle Anderson from thehorse.com. Hello, Michelle. Michelle, are you there? Yes. Yes, okay, I'm here. hello, Michelle. And Hi, um, Amy. <laughs> good morning to Dr. Jones of Florida Equine. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, everybody. It is lovely to have you all on again. Um, it's one of my favorite segments of the week uh, because we get to talk health. And, you, you know, it, Glenn is not as interested in all the horse health stuff as I am. And this is actually a fantastic question that was written in by a listener of ours in Australia. And I've had horses with splints, and I've had horses that have popped splints, and, and, you know, it's kind of one of those things that happens, but you're not always sure exactly how serious it is. Is it something, you know, that can be treated? Is it something that you don't buy a horse because of? Is it a red flag? You know, so um, I'm going to let you take over, Michelle, and then if you want to read the email from our listener, and then you guys take it away, because I'm going to sit back and take notes. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Well, Mel uh, Donald wrote in, as you mentioned, and says, my mare popped a splint recently. She isn't lame, and the splint isn't noticeable unless you're looking for it, but it's there. And then she put a sigh. Oh. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is a splint, and how do I treat it? So I guess my first question for Dr. Jones is, is that is a splint sigh-worthy, or is it going to be okay? <laughs> I'd like to sigh-worthy. <laughs> They're usually going to be okay. Majority of them are just fine. They're kind of ugly to look at, though. Yeah, so what do they look like? Well, they are big, hard knots, or they can be tender knots if they just happened. And uh, they're right below the knee, most commonly, and they can be below the hock as well because what it is is it's an in inflammation and irritation of the splint bone. And there are... 16 splint bones in a horse, two on each leg. No, that would make eight splint bones, sorry. <laughs> my, my I was like, what? The the There's eight oh, splint bones on each, uh, on each horse, two on each leg, and they sit on the outside of the long cannon bone, which is the bone underneath the knee and underneath the um, hock or the carpus or the tarsus. And they tend to get hit, interference by the other limbs, and cause this ugly, raised, enlarged area. So these areas, are they like an inch big or bigger than that? Like how, it depends. What's the the, the uh, collar or the rider in um, so didn't have too bad of a splint, which is a good thing. They can be very, very small. They can just be a nice little lump. And so if you are doing your daily check on your horse, which I highly recommend, you run your hands down your horse's limbs every day for any kind of heat, swelling, 
puffiness, pain, you will run across this lump on the back side of the cannon bone, on the inside or outside of it, on the back side. So it's kind of at the, I would say, the 7 o'clock, 5 o'clock position. If you're looking at the cannon bone from where you're sitting on the saddle down the le leg, the front of the leg would be noon, the back of the leg would be 6 p.m. So it's somewhere around 4, 5 o'clock, 7, 8 o'clock on either side, you'll have this lump, and it can be anywhere from right below the knee down about three-quarters of the way of the cannon bone. And so which, which horses usually get these? Is it age-related? Uh, you'll, you'll mostly see them in the younger horses than you will in the um, middle-aged to older horses. And why that is is they tend to try to figure out where their feet are going and landing. <laughs> and uh, they're put into training. They're asked to do some things that they didn't think they'd ever be asked when somebody's got a saddle on them. So they may be a little bit more clumsy in picking up a gait for the first time or two. Um, they're more agile, so they can overstretch and interfere with a back leg to a front leg, things like that. So you, you more than likely see them in a younger horse, and I'm saying younger horse, something probably under six, maybe even under eight years of age. But... Uh, Older horses, it's, it's not that common to find it in them because they've worked out where to place their feet and they know not to hit themselves. So, again, I guess the origin of splints is interference primarily from the other limbs. Uh, it could be they're down and they're rolling in the field and they kick out and they can hit their other limb too. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something under saddle or something out running in the pasture. But they, so, but they do seem to bump it. So if you're running your hands down your legs doing the daily check that, that you're recommending horse owners do and you feel a lump that's new and hot, um, what, what should you do about that? First, I'd say call your vet because you always want to make sure that that lump is something not to worry about. Um, and the vet will probably come out, evaluate the horse's trot to see if they're lame, and they're going to run their hands down to make sure it's bone or if it's tendon or ligament, because the tendon or ligaments lie between those two splint bones. Uh, especially the suspensory ligament lies on the back side of the cannon bone between those two splint bones. And then the deep and the superficial lie a little bit further out. And if they find it to be painful or fairly large and of concern, they'll probably take an x-ray to make sure that they didn't completely fracture that splint bone. And then they'll make the recommendations based off of what they find. And so now, what, what is, oh, if I could jump in here real quick, I actually, my current event horse fractured his splint bone. He was kicked in the pasture, so he fractured the outside of his splint bone. And, of oh, course, yeah. consulting with many people, one person's like, you've got to get him into surgery right now, one vet. Then one vet was like, you know, um, you probably are going to have to do it, but you can wait a while. And then the other vet, the actual surgeon, it was like, yeah, you'll be all right. <laughs> so, so what is it when a horse does fracture a splint bone, what is the protocol? I just kept him, like, basically in a cast. I, I mean, I bandaged him Good. for probably four to six weeks, I think. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but, you know, all the way up and down the leg, basically from almost halfway up the knee all the way down to the, to the hoof, and just kept him bandaged and immobilized and, you know, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had any trouble with it, and I never had to do the surgery. Good. Well, you know, the rule of thumb is, is if the majority of, it, of the lower portion of the splint, and it's just kind of a, a, a generalized rule, so each splint is different, so don't take this to heart that this is an absolute, is that if you have just a small portion at the lower end that's fractured, you're probably fine with doing nothing because that lower portion may fuse again either back to the cannon or to itself, you know, re-heal or heal back together. Um, if it continues to irritate the horse, you'll know, and you'll see the swelling and, and such. But if it's a larger piece and it has a lot of movement to it, they will recommend taking those out surgically. So it's good that you sent your x-rays to a surgeon and have them say yay or nay because there's a difference of opinion in, in the equine world of whether those need to come out or stay in. Their function is minimal, and so taking them out is not detrimental to the horse's ability to be an athlete. But leaving them in just keeps your cost down. You don't have to do the surgery or have the um, risks of doing surgery because there's always risks with any surgeries. Um, yeah, so the surgeon, it, 
the surgeon did say that, you know, at, at any point we could do it. You know, it's not like it mm -hmm. has to come out today that wait and see what happens. And then if he is lame afterwards, then we can take it out. I was so surprised to hear that and to actually hear that from a surgeon who's like, yeah, we can wait. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. You know, but I had no idea that you could take it out later or... Yeah, you yeah, know, especially it's, it's what they call a non-union fracture, where it does not heal back together. Um, it's going to just kind of hang out there and dangle and irritate um, the tissues around it. So over time, you'll see that there might be a problem, and if you readdress it, take x-rays and say, gosh, it never did fuse back together or, or heal back together, then maybe at that point you might want to take it out because it's just a piece of bone that's kind of wiggling around in the tissues is my best description. But I do have a funny so, story that goes along with yours, Jamie, and that, um, I had a client purchase a horse and had a wound on the back leg, on the outside of the back leg, right below the hock, uh, maybe about halfway down in the cannon, and they wanted me to evaluate the wound, and I looked at it, and she had just bought the horse three to four weeks prior. The horse was not lame, but this wound wouldn't heal up, and I'm thinking the horse, they've, they've had this horse for three to four weeks, their due, due diligence of cleaning it up and putting an antibiotic on this wound, why isn't it healing? And I said to her, you know, I really would like to take an x-ray, because it probably has a foreign body in it. And then maybe take a sample, thinking summer sore, because it was summertime, uh, of the top of the wound, see if maybe we have a summer sore issue going on. Took an x-ray, and the entire splint bone was shattered. It was in oh multiple God. pieces. Wow. And she told me in the history that they, um, the previous owner said, oh, yeah, kick the fence, and they pulled a piece of wood out of there. And I said, well, there could be more wood in there. Hmm, what do you think, Jamie, that piece of wood really was? Let's go with bone, shall we? Yes, because when I sent it up for surgery, when I looked at the x-ray, I was like, oh, it's missing a big piece. When Ew. I sent it up for surgery, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Glenn, um, the surgeon didn't get my message, just that you know, just got the x-rays and that this horse was coming up, took all the pieces out, because all those pieces were shattered, so they were acting like little splinters, because there's no blood supply to them. They were foreign now to the body, because they didn't attach to anything, so they all had to come out, and... I said something to her after post-op, and I said, by the way, you know, yeah, the history was they took this big piece of wood out, which obviously was the bone, and she goes, we were wondering where that piece was. <laughs> <laughs> nice. They put so, it back together. <laughs> yeah. So, no. Now, now, now I am. Obviously, I am it didn't talking. kick. I don't think it kicked the fence. I think it got kicked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that so, piece of wood was actually a piece of bone. So. Yeah, well, now I'm, I'm traumatized by worst-case scenario on uh, splints. So, <laughs> for best case scenario, what, how, how are these treated? If they're non-surgical and, and you find a splint and it's warm, what is your veterinarian probably going to uh, recommend for treatment? Well, exactly what Jamie did is wrapping. And mm -hmm. you can use any different types of wraps. You can put stuff underneath the wrap. You can poultice it to take the heat out. You can sweat wrap it to reduce the edema. You can add some dexamethasone to do an anti-inflammatory with a little DMSO that will uh, absorb through the skin. The whole thing is anti-inflammatory. So icing works great to keep the inflammation down. Your buttes will, butte will work good for anti-inflammatory. Your topical dressings that pull the heat out, maybe something that drives a dexamethasone in like DMSO, all that that's anti-inflammatory is what's going to be the primary thing you're going to want to do. So if your horse pops a splint before your vet comes out, ice it. Because the whole thing is you want to reduce how big and ugly that big swelling is. Because a halter horse, they're not going to want splints on halter horses. And then if you're selling the horse, it's usually not an issue for a splint you know, in a pre-purchase, a lot of people will still take x-rays of them just to see the extent of how much reaction you got. But you can minimize it if you ice it right away. Then after that, there are old products that are out there that are called counter-irritants that they would brush on the skin. One is reducing. You can find it at a lot of tax stores around the thoroughbred racetracks. It's like a counter-irritant you put on the skin, and it helps ease the inflammation in the area. But my favorite is shockwave. Wait, hold on. Uh, so, so before we get to before you get to the shockwave thing, when you say counter irritant, now because I worked at the racetrack, that's actually you mean blistering. Yeah. And yeah, why, why do they do that? And what is and does it work? Well, that was what all we had back in the days for a splint, and what it did was counter the irritation, counter irritant. And it stimulated a response that the skin would contract down and tighten up 
and allow the horse to not have all those inflammatory, any inflammatory effects that are going on in its body, which is normal, it would calm them down to reduce how any inflammatory is going on, which can cause more excessive swelling and problems. So does it work? Mm, I didn't think it worked as well as my shockwave does now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I love my shockwave. shockwaving these. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing, too, is you definitely want to keep the size down, A, for the ugliness for a halter horse, but the other negative side effect is if it goes inside, meaning more towards the center of the cannon bone, you can get impingement on the suspensory ligament. So if you just ignore it and you allow that um, head of the splint bone that possibly got hit or the upper third it got interfered with and it really blows up pretty big, you can cause impingement on the ligament. That would be another worst case scenario besides a fracture you know, type thing. Um, so really jumping on them and icing them and giving butte, um, wrapping them would be the first thing you can do at home. Have your vet out, take a look at it, probably take an x-ray. And I love Shockwave. I, I do Shockwave uh, either three or five sessions, which they're two weeks apart, 10 to 14 weeks apart. And I shock them, and they have reduced down to almost nothing, especially if no. you get it right away. Uh, okay. i got to ask you a really random, probably inappropriate question. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you have the shockwave machine in your truck. Now, okay. I have, I've had my horses a ligament shockwave. It's a fantastic thing. It, it reduces inflammation and reduces things. <laughs> and maybe you don't have any but I know that I do. I wanted to, did you ever just drive around and shockwave your cellulite? <laughs> <laughs> no, never have done that. I have not. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know that too, Glenn. <laughs> I have heard of, like, these, like, I get Groupon, right, you know, and they send, like, these big like, deals, and oh, it's like, boy. hey, come shockwave your cellulite. <laughs> They're like, you know, you get a discount on shockwaving your cellulite, and I thought, if I was a vet, and I had a shockwave machine, I would zap my thighs like all day if that works. I just didn't know if it worked and if you'd ever tried it. And maybe that's something you want to consider. I don't know. <laughs> right, so you're implying that I have cellulite. No. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking that too, Doc. I was going, she doesn't even know what she said. Uh, <laughs> we're women. It's unfortunate, but we're all women and most women have it. So I, maybe you don't. Maybe you're 95 pounds. We've never met. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying what I would do if I had a shockwave machine, I would just drive around and zap my thighs. Why not? Jamie, what I would do if I were you right now is stop talking. That's what I would do right now. <laughs> it's a good thing I got thick skin. I'm a person uh, tall. <laughs> and yes, I do have cellulite. I've had a child, and yes, I do have cellulite. <laughs> but no, I've never shockwaved my cellulite. So that's, well, that's God, who hired her? According to Groupon, you can get a really good discount on going to Scottsdale, Arizona and having your shockwave, your cellulite shockwave. So, you know, there you go. Something to I'll try. probably save the money and do it here at home. And the there you go. My own bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to splints. Sorry. I oh. oh, my goodness. I don't I, know. I don't think have... there's anything we can add. Uh, yeah, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm done. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that vision, that thought, um, that's going to stay with me all day. That's that's quite humorous, I'll have to say. Every you week, I'm er, every week I'm amazed that you come back. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I, even I, next I, week I'll let you know how the shockwave of my cellulite goes. <laughs> I get it, yeah, let us know. How to, take pictures oh, before and after. We want to see it. Oh, <laughs> man, that's too scary. <laughs> That Dr. Jones has made us uncomfortable on this show so many times that it is <laughs> awesome that I finally got her back. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, we love you guys. Thanks for joining uh, us. And uh, if anybody has any questions, obviously, go to FloridaEquine.com. And, and, Michelle, I'm sure that you guys have something on thehorse.com about this or maybe. You can go on there, do a search. Uh, yeah, we have we have some information about splints uh, if you need more information. Um, and but the last thing is, Mel wanted to know how to protect her horse from this. Can we give her a 
Uh, yeah, splint boots. Yeah, yeah, splint boots um, or polo wraps is what's um, used most of the time, so that they, you know, don't interfere. Uh, farrier work. Check your farrier work and see. Make sure that there is um, good balance of the feet, so that that might be a contributing factor. Uh, things like that. Um, the, of course, the ones out in the pasture where they get kicked can't do much about those. Those just happen because they're out playing. Thank you, Dr. Jones. So, yep, <laughs> go to thehorse.com. And, and Love you guys. More. Bye, Jamie. <laughs> Have a great week. <laughs> and I'll volunteer for the cellulite shockwave treatment first, okay? But don't think I'm throwing you under the bus. I'm going with you. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if they don't have just a little too much fun on the Horses in the Morning show. To listen to more of the Horse.com's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the Experts drop-down menu on the left. If you just love listening to Glenn the Geek and Jamie put in their two cents on horse health topics, tune into the Horses in the Morning show every Wednesday at 10 for a weekly fix of the up-to-the-minute horse health information. You can also go to thehorse.com and find the mother load of horse health information covering pretty much every topic imaginable. Don't forget, support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they're the ones making these podcasts possible. Today's sponsor has been Eco Gold. Ask for Eco Gold saddle pads and protective horse boots by name at your local tax store. Buy them online or go to ecogold.ca to learn more. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show. You can subscribe to all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or mp3 player you can also listen to the shows right on facebook the players right there every day i'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip until then go ride your horse the horse radio network and the horse radio network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on horse tip daily